Nick, a very good evening to you. This is good news, isn't it? This is good news when it comes to the, the fear that teachers must undergo and the future of schools. I think it is good news, um, not because there aren't excess deaths uh, of teachers, which I think is obviously tragic, but it's just that we know a lot more about uh, the causes of those excess deaths. You'll also recall that we used to be very uncertain about whether children were susceptible to COVID-19. And we know that almost none of the deaths, less than half a percent of the total number of deaths from COVID have been for children under the age of 19. So there's a lot more evidence now about what, uh, which types of people are susceptible to COVID-19 and also whether or not schools uh, are sites of transmission or not. And the evidence is quite strong that they're not. Uh, as you mentioned, teacher deaths to follow population trends rather than school opening or school closing dates. And this is from very reliable payroll data um, of the Department of Basic Education. Okay. And in your findings, who is more susceptible to COVID? So um, this is not my findings. This is the ep epidemiologists that are telling mm. us, as well as the World Health Organization, that obviously those with comorbidities, uh, the elderly, um, I think that the provincial trends that we're starting to see are, are likely to be um, of interest. We know that Gauteng has entered the third wave uh, uh, and a lot of the other provinces are hot on the heels of Gauteng, uh, but also that the provinces are not equally prepared either for vaccinations uh, or for the administration and in hospitals uh, for COVID care. Um, so I think while it's true that schools don't seem to be sites of transmission, I think I'm also I think the, the very good news is that teachers have been prioritized for vaccines. Um, yeah, that's going to that make a profound impact. It? it should. Yes, most definitely. I mean, I think that um, all the vaccination program that we have in South Africa has obviously been severely delayed. Uh, you know, it's, it's been completely unacceptable how late we've come to this program. Uh, but the fact that we are here now is obviously um, cause for some celebration. And the fact that teachers are likely to be vaccinated um, before the end of July, which is when schools are going to be open. Because you'll remember that uh, for, for more than 80 percent of schools in South Africa, schools are closed for every second day. Still, today, schools were closed for half of learners in South Africa. Mm. And it seems from these findings that there really is no reason for that. Let's talk a little bit more about the excess deaths that are related to nothing happening in school, the teachers, though, who have been dying from it. And our reporters a little earlier on were telling us that, you know, people are still going out. Many don't wear masks. They don't believe in COVID anyway. I mean, that is the problem, isn't it? It is. And, and not adhering to the non-pharmaceutical interventions of social distancing, um, wearing masks, staying away from large gatherings. Um, what this research, which was done by Martin Gustafsson, uh, showed is that there were excess deaths amongst teachers last year. So if we looked at the, the period from March uh, of 2020 until February of 2021, there were approximately 1,678 excess deaths amongst teachers. Um, so there are uh, teachers that are dying from COVID-19, but we must remember there are more than 400,000 teachers uh, and that the excess deaths amongst teachers make up less than 1%. It's so actually about 1.3% of total excess deaths. But the important thing is that it seems that teachers are getting infected in the communities where they live uh, and interactions that are happening outside of schools. And how we know that is uh, if you look at the trends of teacher deaths, these follow the trends almost exactly, almost identically um, of the population level excess deaths and don't have any relationship to the opening dates or the closing dates of schools, which is what we would expect if there was a relationship between uh, school openings and teacher infections. I mean, that really is pause for thought, isn't it? You also found that hunger amongst children is not as bad as it was at the beginning of COVID. Remember when the schools closed down, many of them, that was often the only meal that they would ever get. Tell us more about that. Yes, so in wave four of NIDS-CRAM, so remember there are five waves of the NIDS-CRAM survey and the fifth wave is actually being launched in July, so very soon. But in the fourth wave, it showed that between November and December last year and February and March this year, there was a slight decline in child hunger uh, from around 16% of households to 14% of households that said child went hungry in the last seven days. And while that's a positive news story, it's still important to remember that that figure was about 8%. 
pre-pandemic. So it's still nearly double what it was pre-pandemic. Uh, and one of the other reasons why I think we, we must pause before we celebrate is that the school meal program, which normally fed 9 million children uh, before the pandemic, is still not up to speed in the sense that um, less than, um, I think it was 55 percent, uh, of children actually received a free school meal, which is well below the pre-pandemic levels. Mm. Um, and p the, the biggest reason for that is the rotational timetables where children are only attending school every second, in some instances, only every third day. So I should imagine these findings will impact them as well. Nick, very good to talk to you this Friday evening. Thank you.